Uh, I'm going to call to order this first meeting of 2022 in the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is January 5th. Um, all three members of the board are present and we will begin our public statement read by Commissioner Jones. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear. And we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on now to our next item, item three, election of officers. I would like to nominate Commissioner Julie Thomas to be president of the Board of Commissioners and Commissioner Penny Givens to be vice president of the Board of Commissioners. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Um, all in favor, uh, we'll take a roll call vote with Mr. Cockrell um, uh, on the election of officers. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you so much. Our next item um, is uh, department updates. And uh, first we have uh, Ms. Caudill from the health department. Uh, good morning. Good morning and welcome to 2022. Wow. Uh, been a, a long haul here. <laughs> it is a new year and the battle is raging on with COVID-19. It is still here. Omicron seems to be rearing its easy to transmit head. The Indiana Department of Health reported to us that about 25 to 30 percent of the sequence specimens in Indiana are now Omicron. But given what we know about the variant, it is easy to see with our rising numbers and the surge um, gatherings that it is quite likely much higher than that. Our cases are rapidly rising, indicating that Om Omicron may be more dominant than the data is showing. This week, our cases rose to well over 400 per 100,000 cases. Um, per 100,000 residents, and our positivity rate is over 10%. These numbers moved our advisory to a 2.5, which is still orange, but we are quite likely on the road to being red. Currently, almost 60% of our eligible population has had at least their first dose of vaccine. Almost 59% are fully vaccinated. So we still have a long way to go. Um, and we encourage people to continue to get their vaccination, get their booster. And if you're looking for that vaccine's um, location, ourshot.in.gov is still where you can go to find all of your opportunities for those. In terms of some of the new things that have been happening regarding vaccination, the FDA did expand the use of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, they amended the emergency use authorization uh, for Pfizer. They shortened the time between completion of a primary vaccine, the first two doses, and your booster to five months. And that is for Pfizer only at this time. Um, they allowed a third primary dose um, for immunocompromised children, five to 11 year old. Uh, we are awaiting, ACIP is um, meeting today and we are awaiting word on the expanded uh, single booster dose for those uh, individuals 12 to 15 years of age as well. So we should hear more about that later today. The committee is scheduled to meet one to five. Um, as last I knew. So we will stay tuned for that. Testing, it, demand for testing is extremely high with, you can imagine with um, hundreds of cases 
reported every day, there is lots of testing that's being done. So it should not surprise anybody that supplies are not meeting the demand that we have. We've been here before. We saw this happen before. So with that, the Indiana Department of Health did change some of their procedures yesterday, and this is for state affiliated testing sites. Um, so the mobile clinics, for example, that they have, um, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, um, or if a local health department has, um, has a site that they've secured, then rapid tests will only be available for individuals aged 18 and younger, and those who are symptomatic aged 50 and over. The change is necessary due to the national shortage of rapid antigen tests and is designed to help ensure that students can stay in school and that Hoosiers who are most likely to need monoclonal antibodies are identified within the prescribed window in which they can be administered. Indiana typically uses about 50,000 rapid tests per week, but is only guaranteed to receive 11,000 a week at this time. So that's what generated that change. A mobile site is scheduled to be open today, starting at noon through Saturday. It will be located at 800 North Indiana Avenue, and that's today through Saturday. The hours are noon to 8 p.m. It is open to the whole community, and we are very grateful to Indiana University for providing that space for us. Um, this is open to the community. And they will have rapid tests for those who are eligible. They will have PCR testing and they will have Pfizer and Moderna vaccine available for those who need their first, their second, their booster dose, whatever it is that you need, they will, they will have that there for you. As always, appointments are ideal, but they will be taking uh, walk-ins as, as best as they can accommodate them. Uh, you can, go to uh, the for testing or the booster appointments, go to mobile sites, then click on Monroe and it is listed as M-V-U-I-U um, and you will find the clinic if you want to make the appointment or get further details about that. And with that being very busy, I'm sure there will be some um, logistical, perhaps some traffic things to be cautious about as well. So I just remind people in that area of 800 North Indiana to be cautious as you're going through there, um, whether you're going to the site or not. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, to mention is that we will continue to request these mobile sites as demand is high. Uh, we will continue to do that. IU has let, um, them know that they would be open to them returning as well. So we'll continue to invite those mobile clinics here. The gravity site um, that is on Cook property does only have PCR. So I wanna remind people about that. You do not need an appointment to go to that site. Um, it is drive up or, you know, you can walk up, but it is a drive through clinic. Um, the mechanisms that they have put in place do seem to be helping and making that much more um, user friendly, if you will. So just know that they are open Tuesday through Saturday, eight to four PCR testing only at this time. If you are sick and you can't locate a testing facility or a home test, and we know that home tests are pretty much impossible to get right now, then stay home. Stay home, isolate until your symptoms improve, your fever's gone for at least 24 hours, and at least five days have passed since your symptoms started. A mask must be worn when around others indoors or out for an additional five days. If you can't do that, then please remain in isolation for a full 10 days. It is better to act as though you are positive than to risk sharing infection, whether it is COVID or something else with others. So if you cannot get tested and you are symptomatic, please assume that you are positive and act accordingly by isolating. 
The CDC has recently changed isolation and quarantine guidelines based on data around when somebody is most infectious and likely to transmit the virus to somebody else. It also supports the evidence of good, properly fitting masks and their effectiveness. Quarantines for close contacts have also been changed, and we do expect some additional guidance and some changes yet to come. So, as far as schools and workplaces, while the CDC guidance now allows for a shorter isolation or quarantine option, it does not mean that you must follow the less restrictive guidelines. You may continue to be more restrictive. Further guidance is expected and many will want to wait to see what changes are made before they fully implement any of these new changes. And being prudent and waiting for those updates is perfectly fine and I would support that completely. Do what is safest for your, your workers, for your staff, for your patrons at this time. Nationally, we are seeing unprecedented surges at all levels. 79% increase in cases compared to seven-day average. Cumulative seven-day case rate, highest it has been even with the holiday. Lots of infection despite no reports on cases without access to testing or using home tests. So remember, if you do a home test, that's not reported. So, you know, that lowers the, the actual numbers that we have. There has been an increase in hospitalizations, no significant increase in deaths, um, but we'll have to see with the holidays, there's a delay in lots of reporting. And so we're still watching that very carefully. In Indiana, December 29th, was the highest single day case count of the pandemic with 12,020 cases. And that is as of December 29th. So we may, we probably have already passed that, but uh, January 3rd was the highest seven day test positivity um, at the time. And this was what was reported to us yesterday and it was 18.2%. And I believe yesterday was over 20%. Indian international glimmers. So there are some glimmers of hope. When we look at South Africa, the spike they've had is now decreasing. Upticks in deaths, hospitalizations, uh, but lower compared to earlier this year. So that's some hopeful news. The UK seems to be potentially stabilizing, but we'll have to watch and see with students returning to school in the next couple of weeks what happens. When we look at breakthrough cases, those who are fully vaccinated who still get infected, that is number is growing, but it is still just over 3%. But when you look at those who are hospitalized or who, who die, it is less than 1%. So this indicates that our vaccines still do provide us with protection, and it's why you need to consider getting vaccinated. So my message for you today is hold on. This ride is bumpy and it's not over. Uh, it is very clear that it is going to take all of us working together to stop this surge. So please do your part, vaccinate, get your booster when you're able, protect others as well as yourself, mask up, wash your hands, isolate and quarantine so that you do not pass the infection on to others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cottle. A um, lot of information there. Um, and we appreciate um, all of the um, data and all of the recommendations you've made for us all along the way, but, but especially today. Uh, let's see if there are comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins. Um, well, first of all, I am just so honored to have Ms. Cottle working for the county. She has been just a star throughout all this. We could not have been doing it without her. Um, but um, also I wanted to ask about the new uh, guidelines for schools um, it indicated in today's paper. And we know that sometimes things get misinterpreted. Um, it indicates that people, students with COVID can come to school if they're asymptomatic. Um, I, but I guess I didn't understand how you could stay masked the entire day when you're trying to eat and drink. So 
Uh, do you have do you know any more about what goes into that? <laughs> well, I have not seen the paper yet today, so I I will go look at it as soon as I am done here. If you are ill, you need to isolate, right? So the new guidance shortens the isolation period to five days and fever free for 24 hours with no medicine. So all of those things kind of stay the same. It goes from 10 days to five days. And I, as I've always said with the 10 days, that's a minimum right? So if your symptoms aren't improving, if you still have a fever, it may be six, seven, eight days before you can actually go back. But you should not be in the classroom if you are sick. Um, so that may be an error. Well, these and, that, and I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. Um, yeah. If you, so with the new guidance, it does follow um, the new CDC guidelines. Now, I believe most all the schools, I have not talked to every one of them yet, but I don't, as far as I know, none of them are implementing the new five days quite yet. Um, I think they're, they're holding out in part to see what additional changes come. The official K through 12 guidance from CDC is still forthcoming. Um, so there are still some changes yet to be, be seen and experienced. Now, you could, if, if your student was sick, they were ill, they isolated for the five days, they improved, then they would be able to return on day six per the guidelines should the school decide that they want to follow that. Um, quarantine, remember, isn't for somebody who's sick. Quarantine is for somebody who's been exposed in the classroom. And there is a difference. A, there's a little bit of a difference between if you were exposed in the classroom or you were exposed at home on how they'll handle that in the schools as well for quarantine. And we are all um, just trying to grasp those changes and looking at them. And that's why I think a lot of schools want to take more time to look at that. So I will go. I will go look at the paper as soon as we're done and, and see what it what it says. Maybe I misunderstood it too. So you know, these things are possible but, before I wake up. You know, it is all so confusing, and that is why, again, I would say for any business, for schools, um, taking your time, keeping things the way they are for the moment and really getting a grasp on what the new guidelines are going to be, how you can implement them, and looking at whatever changes may come in the next week. That makes sense to me. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I just like to point out that while people may feel somewhat reassured that the death rate is going down, the fact that more and more hospitalizations are taking place is an extremely dangerous situation. It is particularly difficult for people who do not have COVID, but are in need of hospital services anyway, and simply cannot access them because there are so many people in the hospitals with COVID. So if you aren't vaccinated, please, please get vaccinated as quickly as you can. Absolutely. Our hospitals are almost at the peak of December of 2020. So, you know, they, they are over full, overtaxed, uh, and you are right, um, I have a friend who, you know, is has a neurological issue that is causing paralysis, cannot get their surgery because of COVID. So when we talk about elective surgeries, you know, it's not talking about, you know, just any old thing. These are things people desperately need, but they are not in an immediate life-threatening situation. Um, and that's really the difference. So when people hear the term elective surgeries, it doesn't mean sometimes what people think it means. It can be much more serious. Yeah. 
Great, great points. Um, and um, indeed, our our healthcare workers across the county, across the state, across the country have just been. Um, we've asked so much of them, and and as Commissioner Jones says, the best thing to do right now is to get vaccinated. And and I like the idea of if you're not sure what the protocols are, just go with what you know from last week or the week before. Um, it's going to be really important to to take um, some of the stress off of our healthcare system right now, um, and off of those workers who have given us so much for so long, <laughs> for so long. Uh, we appreciate them all, and um, and I also want to extend a, a thank you uh, to you, to the, the the health department, and to IU for pulling together this um, testing vaccine clinic January fifth today through the 8th. Um, that is something that our community needs. And with students coming back, it's perfect timing. So appreciate all the work that goes into that. It's not as easy as it sounds. Oh, we'll just have a clinic. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a, there's a ton of work involved. And I know there's some volunteers going out to help as well from the medical corps. So um, really appreciate all the effort that goes into that. Um, it, it's well worth it, and I'm, I'm glad we can um, offer that to the community. So thank you for that. All right, and we'll talk with you soon. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Auditor Smith, um, Kathy Smith, to offer a department update um, on remonstrations for annexation. The immunity. There you go. Good morning, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. You guys all look bright eyed and bushy tailed today. So I'm, and that was a really nice update by Penny. So now you kind of get the bad news. We're going to be extremely busy today and tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, we'll have people coming in here dropping petitions off left and right, like we experienced yesterday. Uh, so I have my, my team in here. This is the complete annexation team, me and these two other individuals, Patrick Ellis and Chris Munch. And we have one young lady downstairs, uh, Danelle Uli, who also lives in 1B, which is where I live because you know, they're, you know, our properties are up for annexation as well. She's lived there since she was born and she's my age. So. Um, so this is near and dear to our hearts. And so I wanna kind of give you guys an update and to let you know that we are an exhausted team, but we're still working very, very diligently to see that the will of the taxpayers um, come to fruition. So if you guys, if there's anybody out there who can hear me and who's listening, who has petitions that we have given you, we'd like you to please turn them in by tomorrow afternoon. The courthouse will be open. We're going to stay open at least an extra hour uh, later tomorrow to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get in here. We will have people who are here to do, uh, to, um, to uh, certify signatures through the notary process. And if you have not picked up a petition, and you would like to still petition, please come in today or tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow would be more for single people uh, just doing their own. But if you, if you and your neighbors still have want to collect some signatures or you know some people who have not signed that do not wish to be part of, uh, have their property annexed, we, this is a team that you'll talk to when you're here. You can give us a call or you can email us at annexation at co.monroe.in.us. We will get a quick email right back to you, um, set up a time to talk to you, or you just feel free to walk in the courthouse, come to the bottom floor. There's a reception area where we'll be waiting. So I just wanted to touch base that this is the end of the 90-day period. Tomorrow at um, would be 4 o'clock, but we are going to, um, to be open a little bit later, and I'm sure uh, Commissioner Julie Thomas will speak to that here in a second. But I want to answer any questions that you may have. And we do have an update on numbers, although I, I hate to give an update on numbers. So I don't want people to think, oh, we're there, so I don't need to come in. Well, some of the numbers, I mean, the numbers that we have are, are looking a lot better. However, the waiver, not, we haven't got all the waivers back from the city be, uh, because people are still turning in uh, these um, petitions. Those petitions, I have five days to get those to the city. They have 15 days to get those back to me. So you can see there is a time lag that, that we can come up with uh, waivers. And we don't want to discourage anyone from coming in 
and we, and it just be a couple names, a couple names off. Uh, so we really want people to feel like every signature counts because it certainly does. Some of these numbers are so very close. It, it's kind of, um, it, it's kind of uh, really, I'm hoping that there's not that many waivers to offset this uh, little differentiation. So I'll be happy at this time to answer any of your questions or discuss at length if you have a topic you'd like me, us to, any of us to speak on. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Auditor Smith. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins? Uh, no, just thank you to your staff. I know that they have continued to do their regular jobs on top of what's going on with annexation. And so uh, it is very, very much appreciated by all of us and it has not gone unnoticed. I appreciate that because they've truly been rock stars. They really have. Commissioner Jones? Yeah, I also really appreciate all the effort that you, all of you have put in. Um, I know it has been a big job and uh, it's, it's really the most important aspect of this for the county. So just thank you so much for all you're doing and please keep up the great work. Yeah, and uh, I will add my gratitude in there as well. Um, I know that um, this seems like it should be such a simple process, but it is not. It is very complicated, very complex, and the large number of parcels that have been included makes that process even more uh, difficult and complicated. But so we appreciate all of your um, hard work and diligence and attention to detail uh, that's needed to, to get, this, uh, get this paperwork processed appropriately and correctly. Um, and um, I'm uh, grateful to hear that uh, the uh, auditor's office will remain open through 5 p.m. on Thursday tomorrow, uh, which is the deadline um, for um, uh, collecting uh, signatures uh, to remonstrate against annexation. Um, if you do have any questions, please contact the auditor as soon as possible. You don't want to delay. You don't want to wait till the last minute. Um, we do plan to hold a brief press conference on Thursday at 5 p.m. at the courthouse. Uh, so we just want to make sure that the media is aware of that as well. Um, and with that, um, let's see. Thank you again for joining us and for giving us an update. And I do want to there. mention, if you don't okay. mind. Uh, so you know, life goes on when you're having all these um, having all these extra extra work to do. Your work doesn't stop. I appreciate you noticing that. But life goes on too. Uh, Patrick has lost his grandmother that he lived with for, and the funeral is tomorrow. Or the 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 memorial service is tomorrow at five. So you will not see him. Uh, he will be obviously there. But I did want to mention that because he has. Honestly, between his GIS expertise and Chris just really being hardworking, um, not just work meeting people, but through the computer doing all the emails back and forth. I, I just I just want to again say that that is not reflection of, of his not interest being interested in being here tomorrow. It's just that he has a personal event um, because life does go on even when you have giant projects that take every minute. So sorry to interrupt. I'm finished. That's okay. No, nope. um, we do want to extend our condolences to you and your family, uh, Patrick. So thank you uh, so much. Um, all right. And let's see if there's any other departments uh, that have an update to offer. I do not see any. So with that, we will move on to our next agenda item, which is public comment. Uh, public comment. Um, is uh, reserved for items that are not on our agenda. Uh, the time limit is three minutes uh, per speaker. We will ask you to uh, verify your name uh, and your county of, uh, whether or not you're a Monroe County resident. Uh, when you get to two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. Thank you, Ms. Dayton. When you hear that tone, that means you have 30 seconds left to complete your comments. Um, and with that, um, it looks like the first on our list is uh, Guy Lofman. Can you verify your name and 
Uh, your county of residence, please. Yes. Uh, my name is Guy Lofton. I am a Monroe County, Indiana resident. Great, thank you. Happy New Year to you all, and thank you for undertaking another year of service to Monroe County. Congratulations to Commissioner Thomas on re-election as president and to Commissioner Githens as election as vice president. And uh, Commissioner Jones, thank you for your year of service as vice president here last year, the most recent year. I appreciate the progress made toward finding space for the administration of this year's elections on May 3rd and November 8th. Your offer of the Napa building and portions of the Showers building, along with existing facilities in the Johnson Hardware building, and the election board's acceptance of them means a vital agreement was reached in 2021. I thank you and the election board for reaching that landmark. I am confident that assessment of security and other needs will be promptly made and implemented. That is clearly the election board's top priority. One of the most important, if somewhat unheralded elements in that agreement is recognition by the commissioners that 12,000 square feet of space is needed for election administration. You found it for this year. Again, that's greatly appreciated, but it does invite the big question. Will the commissioners commit to finding 12,000 square feet of dedicated election space in one consolidated county-owned location to permanently dedicate to election administration? I ask that you do so. I recognize it might not be in the Johnson Hardware Building. It is hard to imagine the probation department being excited about moving. I don't know any of the particulars of the options, Obviously, there are the Curry Building, Showers, the Old Courthouse, the Justice Building, the Highway Garage, as well as Johnson Hardware. Perhaps the city would join in an interlocal agreement concerning some of its space in Showers or some other location. Full occupancy of Johnson Hardware would work for election administration, but I know you can't commit to that today. I understand you have many priorities to balance before that decision can be made. But I do ask you to commit to consolidating election operations in one county-owned location. Ideally, that commission would be implemented before the 2023 election. It should certainly be completed before the 2024 presidential election. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Lofman. We appreciate you um, and a happy new year to you as well. Next, we have Jim Shelton. Can you uh, verify your name and whether or not you're a Monroe County resident? Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute. <laughs> yes, this, I am, this is Jim Shelton. Good morning. Uh, Happy New Year. I am a resident of Monroe County, and I want to speak to you and the public on behalf of Court Appointed Special Advocates or CASAs. We're having our winter training starting in just about five weeks. It'll, it'll start February 8th and run through uh, the end of the month. It will uh, not meet on President's Day. We still have somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 children for whom we do not have a volunteer to be assigned to be their CASAs. CASAs advocate for the children who have been, uh, their parents are in the court system because they have abused or neglected their children. Uh, sadly, uh, probably due to the strain of COVID, we've, we're having more and more abuse cases. They used to predominantly be uh, not taking good care of the children, not being able to take care of the children. So we need volunteers to go through the training uh, you'll learn what it means to be a CASA. You'll learn how Indiana uh, child protection law works, learn all the different steps of a case. And then you would be uh, sworn in by Judge Galvin and Judge Harvey and be assigned a case that you would work with one of the CASA staff. So you're not out there by yourself. Uh, you don't need any special background. You sort of need tenacity and good communication skills. And uh, the program will teach you what else you need to know, and then we'll work with you. The staff will be able to give you advice when you get into some little weird things that probably were not covered during the training. 
it's an excellent opportunity for you to help your community to get involved with the community. And it's great to help the children. Uh, children who have a CASA are much less likely to ever get back in the system again. Typically will not be in foster care or in some such other placement for as long. So please think about it. Uh, you can go to MonroeCountyCASA.org, click on the volunteer link. You'll find a frequently asked question page that'll provide a bunch of details. Or you can call 333-2272. Applications would be the first step. You can find them online and fill them out online or you can print them out and fill it out and mail it in. Uh, they'll need to be getting those in toward the end of the month so that there'll be time to interview you and uh, get you set up for class. So thank you for the opportunity to share that information and uh, happy new year. All right. Thank you so much and happy new year. Um, and next we have Rita Farrell, Van Buren Township Trustee. Good morning. Thank you all. And uh, my name's Rita Farrell. I'm the trustee at Van Buren Township. And I so lovingly am in Monroe County. Um, <clears throat> I want to say hats off to all the individuals that have worked so diligently to stop annexation. No, we don't have final numbers yet. We are still out there. Uh, volunteers are going door to door. They know people. I want to commend them. They are the ones that have done this. Uh, so proudly I am of all of them. Also, I want to thank the commissioners for helping us to do the right thing whenever we have questions. You guys have been just out, outstanding. The auditors, uh, dep auditor and deputy auditors. I, I, I am so humble with them, with the thanks that they have done for this. So, Hopefully, we will be able to succeed. We will know more <laughs> probably late February, early March, but hats off to you from me. I, I really, really appreciate everything you've done. And I, I just wanted to say that. Thank, thank you so much, Ms. Barrow. Uh, we appreciate you and you've worked diligently throughout this whole process yourself. Uh, you've really uh, worked very hard for Monroe County residents. Um, we are very grateful um, for the work of all of those volunteers um, who um, got out there and knocked on doors and um, did their very best to contact people by phone um, stood out and in, in the cold, um, went, had driveway uh, petition um, um, efforts uh, when it was warmer. Um, and um, Margaret Clements has also done amazing work. Um, she's a member of our plan commission. Uh, so proud of, of her. Uh, but the organizational work um, has been amazing. And um, thank you, Ms. Barrow, for that. Uh, and Ms. Clements. Uh, for that work, um, just so necessary and so important. And it was great for county residents to have people to turn to who could say, here's what we need to do next. So um, organization was very important. Uh, thank you. And um, next we have um, Councillor Hawk, I believe. Uh, yes. I also wanted to thank all of the volunteers who've worked so hard. And I'm very proud of Colby Wicker, who uh, was the council assistant um, uh, for a, a bit and uh, did great work there. And he's been marvelous help on this and so many community volunteers. Um, so uh, if this if this is indeed successful to stop the annexation for all those people who wanted not to be a part of the city, uh, then we have many to be thankful. Uh, 
and and to say very much how much we appreciate uh, those who are elected officials, those who are not, just those people who all love Monroe County. And for me, I especially love Monroe County government. Um, so a big kudos to Rita Burrow, to to all of her volunteers, uh, working with Kobe Wicker, uh, there are many, many others as well, and the people in the auditor's office. So folks, if you haven't signed and you wish to, and you don't want to be annexed, please get into the courthouse either today or tomorrow and get that done. Uh, very proud of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councillor Hawk. And Happy New Year to you. All right, uh, looks like we don't have any other um, uh, commenters. Uh, so we will move on to um, item six, please. Um, make sure I'm not muted here. Okay, um, move approval of the minutes from November 17th, joint 2021, joint meeting of the commissioners and the county council and the commissioners meeting minutes from December 15th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. I know we've sent some edits and comments uh, to Ms. Freeman. Um, any other comments or edits at this point? Okay. Uh, Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on both the November 17th minutes and the December 15th minutes, 2021? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, 3-0. Thank you so much. And our next item, please. Move approval of the claims docket, accounts payable January 5th, 2022, and payroll for December 30th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and we have a second and we have Mr. Miller here to tell us all about it. Good morning and happy new year. Good morning and happy new year to you as well. Um, the total for claims was $4,996,935.80. Just over a million dollars was actually for fund to fund transfers um, from motor vehicle highway to motor vehicle highway restricted, $500,995.53. And the remaining $500,000 was for uh, 9107 next level trails to uh, the rainy day fund, uh, followed by $460,144.41 for ENB Paving Inc. for paving on Karst Farm Greenway, the north segment, um, $458,787.35 was for Anthem Inc., uh, which was primarily for medical claims and stop loss premiums, $426,244.75 was for the Convention and Visitors Bureau for the first quarter operational funds. $413,079.86 was for Washington Township Water uh, for utility relocation construction for Sample Road Phase 2. $358,402.28 was for food and beverage tax distribution for November. $250,000 was for Health Net Foundation, Inc. Uh, for the 2021 council, county council uh, budget approval. Uh, I missed $271,374.55 was for innkeepers tax collection distribution. And finally, uh, $142,421.42 was for RBB CSC for the STEM spring 2021 payment. And as far as payroll, the total was $1,620,349.90. $1,143,627.39 was for the main supplemental and incentive payrolls. And the remaining $476,722.51 were for all the payroll related AP claim items. Wow, great work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Impressive. Thank All right, you. let's see. Let's see if there are comments or questions, uh, Commissioner Gibbons. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised that you could keep going. The numbers just kept. Yeah, oh, no. I skipped one. I think that was a first, but thank you very much, <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Jones. No, not right now. 
All right. Um, all right, let's see if there's any public comments on uh, this item. Um, Councillor Hawk. suspect that was from a prior incident. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, seeing no uh, comment on this, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on approval of claims docket accounts payable January 5th, 2022 and payroll December 30th, 2021. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Mr. Miller. All right, um, I want to note that we have received three reports. Um, the report from the Clerk of the Circuit Court, November 2021, uh, report from the Treasurer, November 2021, and the Weights and Measures report that runs from November 16th to December 15th, 2021. And with that, we will move on to new business. Um, Item A, please. Yes, move approval of a Monroe County Continuity of Operations um, in our infectious disease addendum A. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Ms. Purdy, would you tell us all about it? Well, am I unmuted? Forgot. Yes. Okay. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry. Um, so this is the county's. Uh, response to the um, OSHA emergency temporary standard um, on vaccination and testing. And I believe this was originally issued in November of last year. It's been stayed and then it was um, reactivated, if you will. And um, the Supreme Court is going to be hearing arguments from uh, two different cases, I believe, both sides on January 7th. Regardless, this um, the standard is um, is active and is one that we have to comply with. This is a standard that all businesses of 100 more employees have to comply with. And um, the, there's two options. One is you mandate that every employee be vaccinated. Uh, the other one is um, that you um, those employees who are not vaccinated have to uh, submit every seven days um, COVID testing and they have to wear a mask while indoors. Um, as it stands right now, Monroe County has a mask um, uh, requirement, so that's not gonna differentiate between our employees, those who are vaccinated and not vaccinated at this point in time. But this, um, this policy is going to go into effect beginning on Monday the 10th, and um, we will have some attachments for it to help departments to track this information um, and keep the information available. Um, for them. And if anybody has any questions in our departments about it, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Um, this is a, a fluid event, just I think as everything has we found has been um, during COVID. And we want to make uh, our, our environment as safe as we can for our fellow employees and for our public. So I'm um, bringing this to you, asking for your approval. And once approved, we'll get it sent out to our department heads. Great. Thank you so much. Comments, questions? Commissioner Gibbons? Um, I do have one question about the title, and I apologize that I didn't catch this, having looked at this multiple times now. Should this be um, a Mill County continuity of operations infections disease or infectious disease? Infectious. infectious. Yes, good catch. Yeah. Infectious and disease, both spelled correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But even on, on the, the, the what we have to look at, it says infections. So no. um, it does say infections. Yes. So it should be infectious. Yes. I will correct that before it goes out. <laughs> and Thank I apologize you. that I didn't, yeah. We've no. looked at this multiple times. And, yeah. Yeah. Me too. So yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I will correct. All right. Commissioner Jones. Um, yeah, I just would like to point out that employees who do get vaccinated, there is a very pleasant incentive for them. Um, so please take that into account when you're making your decision. 
Good point. Yes, yes, it's a very good point. And that's and this um, this standard at this point in time uh, covers a policy that we're enacting here covers all full time and part time employees. So mm -hmm. I should make that clear also. Very good. Great. Thank you so much. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Um, yes. uh, I have a question from what I gathered, uh, the employees who are not vaccinated will be required to, to present um, a successful test showing they're negative every seven days. And yet, uh, from what we've seen in the news, the tests are not as readily available as in the past. And if they do um, another kind of test, uh, they have to have a proctor and that's difficult. So, and what about the people who have not received the vaccination and they need to present um, on the 10th? Do they need to present on the 10th uh, a negative test? Um, I, I mean, I'm just saying it, it looks like we do have some stumbling blocks along the way here yeah. regarding the test. Right, and that is definitely um, a true statement that the testing is gonna be difficult to obtain. Um, and like anything else um, that we kind of have, as long as there's a legitimate reason and we can substantiate that reason, um, no one is going to be penalized. Um, but we have to keep it in our records and show that we've done everything that we can to, to be in compliance. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to try to work with everyone as much as we can and understanding the limitations that we're dealt. Right. Yeah. And, and we do understand, um, Councillor Hawk, that there are a number of things that are beyond our control, <laughs> <laughs> uh, including COVID itself. Yeah. Um, and uh, but the that the testing uh, situation remains fluid, um, and it is one that will change again in a week and two weeks. But uh, this policy has been crafted to uh, contend with uh, as many eventualities as possible. Um, and uh, Ms. Purdy has already worked with. Um, uh, some of the key department heads uh, regarding um, proctoring. And so uh, the paperwork is there. Um, it just needs that, those records just need the final approval from legal and they'll be ready to go. Um, the record documentation sheets. So uh, we're in good place, um, as good as we can be, given the fact that we can only control what we can control. <laughs> so we spent a lot of time on this. Um, this is one of those things that you spend a great deal of time on and you look at the end document, you think, wow, that's not very long, but it's very good. It's a very clearly written document, so it is good. <laughs> um, thank you for that. All right, uh, any other um, members of the public wish to comment on this item? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll come back uh, to the board for a vote. Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on Monroe County Continuity of Operations Infectious Disease Addendum A. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank, Thank you. you so, Thank you so much. Next item, please. New approval of the ratification of Workforce Development COAG Award to the Monroe County Health Department Fund name, Crisis Coad Supplemental Workforce, fund number 8111 in the amount of $440,000. Second. Great, we have a motion and we have a second and we have Ms. Cottle and it looked like we had Ms. Rice here as well uh, to tell us about it. Thank you. This we talked about in December. We had been talking about it for a little while. We knew this was coming. It is money that the state has received. Um, it's COVID funds, 
and it is actually for local health departments to work with their schools um, in the midst of everything that's happening around COVID. So we intend to get as much of these funds directly to the schools as possible. We do have plans to, one of the requirements is to hire a school liaison. So we've started that PAC process of doing that. And um, I've got a call out. Um, we've engaged some help in terms of how we can figure out an equitable way to um, disperse those funds and how we determine um, how much different schools get. And if you will ratify this, then we will be able to continue to move forward and support our schools and all of the efforts that, that they are making during this pandemic. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions? Commissioner Gittins? Um, I just applaud the department. I know that you received this money because you are doing this work already, basically, to work with our, our schools and to keep kids and all the staff as safe as possible, too. So um, congratulations on this. Even though it's a little extra work to find somebody, um, I'm sure it's it'll benefit the entire community. Yeah, it, it is extra work, and there are some counties that declined it. Wow. So, um, but we felt like our schools needed the help. We could not pass it up. Wow, good for you. Uh, and Commissioner Gibson, I'm sorry, Commissioner Jones? Well, you just answered my one question, which was whether or not any other counties had decided to not take this, take advantage of this. And thank you for being on top of it and seeing to it that Monroe County would get this money. Yeah, really impressive work. Um, and I think that gets, um, I think our county residents have been spoiled by our health department. Um, and the fact is that, that you've gone after a great deal of funding. You've made yourself a lot of extra work uh, for yourself and your staff. And you've just, it's just been great all throughout this whole pandemic and at other times too. Uh, but it's really important to have these these funding mechanisms in place, and I'm sure that the schools will really appreciate it, and the parents and the staff members as well. So thank you for that. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Okay, seeing none, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on ratification of the Workforce Development Coag Award to Monroe County Health Department? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next item, please. Move approval of the award for the construction bid for the Karst Farm Greenways South segment. segment. Second. We have a motion and a second, and there is Ms. Rice. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Tell us all about it. So you all know that you received and approved years ago a next a two point three million dollar grant from the state. We used part of that to construct um, half of a trail from Ellensville to the Carson Greenway. That is now completed. What is before you today is um, a request to award the project to the lowest and most responsive bidder. This will be the next phase that will connect the newly built trail to the Carstorm Greenway. So we received in December three bids. Um, e and B Paving Inc. is the lowest, most responsive bidder at $957,600. And I'm asking you today to award the project to them. I'll then work with them to develop a contract and we'll bring that contract back to you for approval. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Great. Uh, Commissioner Giffins? Uh, no, I know that um, from working with other people that one of the things that uh, is looked at when they talk about quality of place are the amount of trails that a location has. And so this is one of the additional things that Monroe County is doing to improve quality of place and the lifestyle of people who live here. Commissioner Jones? I'm sure there are a lot of people who are really going to appreciate seeing this completed. 
Um, I believe it's going to be a total of seven point something miles of trail, which. Yeah. It's, it's um, and you know, this is really part of a much larger plan. If, you know, we have that internal trails group and, and you know, I know Penny's part of that. You know, ultimately, and when I talk to the state of Indiana, they'd like to, our part of the state is an important region for their trail system. It's called the Uplands. And they would really like to connect McCormick's Creek State Park eventually to Louisville, like a trail that goes and, you know, through Bloomington to Bedford to New Albany to Louisville. So this is a small part of a much larger, grander scheme for trails that would uh, provide economic development and tourism. And, um, you know, just being out on this little section that we developed we passed many people that were out there using it, walking their dogs and getting exercise. And so, and we've had very good feedback. Um, EMB did a great job with this first part that they did, and I'm confident that they'll do a nice job on this next phase too. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I did have, um, I, just so that the public is aware, um, a great bulk of our uh, packet this week involves these bid documents um, as they were presented, uh, including those, um, uh, all three of those who, who bid on this project. So that's why this packet is so incredibly long, but they do, offer information on um, who their subcontractors might be, um, they have their insurance, they have um, all of the uh, requisite uh, paperwork included, and that's why our packet is so um, huge <laughs> this week, just so that um, our public knows what, what this is all about. But uh, you can see um, who their subcontractors are, and it's nice. Um, I'm glad to see a local company, and it looks like at least one of their subcontractors is local, which is nice. So um, it's really, really great to see that. Uh, let's see if there's any public comments on this item. I don't know if either Ms. Whitmer or Mr. Robertson want to speak as well. Maybe not. Um, our surveyor, Mr. Enright Randolph. Yes, hi, I just want to really applaud the county on their efforts with um, extending the collaboration across county lines and across municipal boundaries and really creating a, a, an, an, a enhanced network for our multimodal commuters. And that's amazing. Uh, when I first jumped in in 2016, uh, we were doing great work, but we all came together and now we have uh, substantial uh, objectives and goals to meet to really continue to enhance our trails. So I, I wanna commend Margie, Kelly, and everyone else involved. Also Lisa Rich, she's a big contributor. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, Parks, Parks Board. Um, um, and yes, uh, Highway is, is played a huge role in this as well. All right, um, I don't see anyone else wishing to comment. Um, so with that, um, um, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll um, to award the construction bid for the far Karst Farm Greenway South segment to e and Paving. Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Next item, please. Move approval of Bledsoe, Rigert, Cooper, and James Engineering surveying for Flatwoods Park. Fund name 2021 GO bond. Fund number 4814 in an amount not to exceed $35,000. Second. All right, we have a motion and we have a second uh, and we have Ms. Whitmer here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Uh, and this is, oh, good morning and happy new year. Uh, this is an excellent 
um, engineering document that we're going to be needing engineers to help us with the update of Flatwoods Park for ADA purposes. We'll be putting in a brand new playground uh, we have a lot of drainage issues out there. Uh, we also want to make the park uh, hopefully uh, ready for greenway connections. And we do want to work with the planning department to make sure everything is a go on our master plan for Flatwoods Park. So engineering is critical to, to start this uh, project out. And hopefully the playground will be installed by the end of this year. Great news. Excellent. All right, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Oh, I've seen some of the you know, initial discussions on this and it looks like it'll be an incredible improvement to what's going on out there, both for the playground and for the drainage and everything else that they're, they're planning to do. So kudos. Well, this will be the first major improvement that we've had uh, since the building of the park. Right, since it opened, yeah. Good point. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes, I, I was actually on the Parks and Rec board when this park was open, and it's been exciting to watch how it develops. And uh, I'm glad that we're able to make these improvements. It certainly is an area where drainage is um, an important aspect of things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. All right, let's see if there's um, any public comment on this item. All right, seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the Bledsoe Rigger Cooper James Engineering Surveying uh, contract for Flatwoods Park? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve Davy Resource Group Service Agreement for Parks and Recreation Department, fund name, County General. Fund number 1000-30006-0803 in an amount of $10,000. Second. All right, we have a motion and we have a second. And uh, I believe Mr. Robertson is presenting this today. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So this service agreement is for uh, Davy Resource Groups tree keeper software it's actually a five-year subscription for the software um, back in late 2020 davy resource group developed a, a tree inventory for our department and a management plan for our the trees along our greenway corridors as well as our parks um, so along with that project they provided us with a free year subscription to their tree keeper software. Um, and essentially what the software allowed us to do uh, was just to keep our inventory updated. When we remove trees and plant trees, it allowed us to update that system. Um, and now that our, our annual uh, free subscription is up, uh, this agreement is for a, a five year subscription to continue using that. Um, I can say that it's been a big benefit for our staff and our department to be able to use it. Um, it allows us to communicate better with contractors and vendors when we're getting project quotes um, for tree removal. And then it, it also is just a very seamless, easy way for us to keep our inventory updated. So um, this, the software has been a huge plus for us and we're hopeful to continue using it. Um, but if you have any additional questions, I'm happy to answer. All right, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? No, um, I've actually heard um, part of your staff talk about how, how they like it. And so it makes everything go more smoothly. They, they're able to actually have an inventory, which they didn't have a few years ago. Exactly, and, and we're hopeful to continue that. So I should also add with this, uh, this software, there are plenty of ecosystem benefits that it tracks too. So that's, that's helpful information for our staff as well. That's great. Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes, I was wondering, um, there are some areas in, in the county's parks that are just heavily wooded areas. 
are all of those trees included in the inventory or is it just the trees that are more in the areas that have been developed? Right. So when we when we first were outlining this project with Davy Resource Group, we essentially it was actually done um, along with some grant funding. So we had a, a budget to work with and we worked with them to identify the most effective use of those dollars. And what we did was we inventoried all of the trees within a hundred foot corridor of the trails, uh, all of the, and then with, so that was the greenways and then our parks, we just inventoried what they would consider uh, trees in high risk areas. So if they were to fall in areas where there could potentially be higher risk. So we did identify, there are areas where there were a bunch of trees and then there were some where there weren't as many trees. It was more to do with the risk if one of them were to, to fall. Thank you. Um, that's what I suspected. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make sure. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for your working on this. Uh, let's see if there are any, um, if there's any public comment on this item, just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. You will have three minutes total to speak. I do not see any hands raised. So with that, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on Davy Resource Group Service Agreement for Parks and Recreation? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, thank you so much. Next item, please. Move for approval for agreement between City of Bloomington and Monroe County for permission to use digital underground fiber. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Rice, thank you for joining us again. This is a continuing agreement um, asking you to approve it retroactively to December 31st. Meeting schedules were such that um, we didn't get it done before the end of the year, but we are currently using, I think probably right now, these six strands of fiber. Um, and I think that something might've been cut recently and we realized how important this was. So we have long had this relationship with the city where they let us use fiber from their uh, Bloomington Digital Underground. Doesn't cost us anything. We do have the right to get out of it if they, you know, would, would suddenly uh, impose a cost and we didn't wanna pay that or we had some other option but it's working well. This is a great example of a city county partnership that is, um, is great and it helps us out. And we're, you know, we're grateful to the city for allowing us to have this agreement once again. So it's just an annual agreement and asking you to approve it today. Um, I don't know if there's anybody here technically that wants to speak to it. I'm certainly not that person, um, but um, it's really, it's the exact same agreement we've had just extending it for another year. Great, thank you so much, Ms. Rice. Um, Commissioner Giffins, did you have a technical question for Ms. Rice? <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means, fun. come on. <laughs> Let's try, this is the, this is the comedy time. <laughs> well, but but we, we did experience a problem when uh, I think there was some digging along the, the route. Uh -huh. and, uh, so, so we are, <laughs> we do use that. And, and is this part of what also CATS uses for the feeds? Um, to allow the community to be participating with us even right now? I don't know, probably. I mean, it's, it probably is. I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes until somebody from TSD tells me I'm wrong. <laughs> but it, it, it is important. I mean, we've, we've benefited from this. And, you know, any, you think about infrastructure. If, if you can share existing infrastructure and that's what this is, just makes sense for the public. You don't have to double up on things and increase the costs. And, and I think this is just a great example of sharing infrastructure. Yeah. Commissioner Jones? Um, I'll just say that I'm very pleased that this is happening. And I couldn't even figure out which technical questions to ask. <laughs> we tried. We tried. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for bringing this to us today. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item and hopefully no technical questions. <laughs> I'm seeing none. Um, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the agreement between City of Bloomington and Monroe County for permission to utilize the digital underground fiber? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. 
Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Um, move to approve the interlocal agreement in regards to the 2020 and 2021 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Um, Mr. Cockrell, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we've had a an agreement with the city for this grant for a, for a number of years, and that is due primarily to the fact that the granting agency only wants one uh, uh, grant application per county. Um, if you notice the 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 amount is has always been split based upon the uh, percent of of uh, violent crimes within each district this year the for these two years it was 91 percent in the city and nine percent in the county um spoke with the sheriff and he uh, and with their discussion they had agreed that the that that was the tire deflation devices were the appropriate uses for this funding at this time so this is just asking you to approve that um as it has gone through the the, the sheriff and it is how we've historically handled this grant Great, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Yeah, what's a tire deflation device? Um, I, will, I will defer the question to Brad, but I'll answer it this way. I always picture it of the, 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 the straps with the, uh, with the nails that you see in the old movies where they run across it and deflates the tires. I think it's a little more technically savvy this, these days, but I think that's the, the basic premise of them. Yeah, Thank you. That, would be, that would be it. Uh, it keep, keeps the community safe in pursuit situations. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I was just gonna say that chases are so very dangerous and this is hopefully a way to end them quickly before anyone gets seriously hurt. Great, thank you so much. Um, comments from the public, just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the interlocal agreement uh, for the 2020-2021 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, thank you so much. Next item, please. Move to approve interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of Bloomington and Monroe County regarding building code authority. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, tell us all about Mr. Cockrell. Yes, yeah, so we've had an, an interlocal agreement with the city of Bloomington for the building department for quite a while. This, is, this allows the county building department to do all the inspections for the construction uh, located within the city limits as well as within the county. Uh, this is a one-year extension to that agreement. There are no other material changes to it. Great. I don't know if you have any other questions, but... Let's, let's see if there are. <laughs> Comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Oh, I'd love to be able to ask a technical question, but this one also is just <laughs> beyond me. A veterinary question would be good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> No, we're we're uh, we have a um, yeah. The technical questions for uh, building are are definitely technical, um, but this is uh, this is a really important interlocal to have um, because it does um, bring us a great deal of consistency. Um, Commissioner Jones, comments, questions. Um, we've just we've had this before us rather frequently, and uh, it appears to be very successful. So I'm happy to keep it going. Yeah. And with our new software, permitting software uh, with the county, uh, the city has permitting software. Um, I know that there is an effort being made so that they speak to one another. Um, uh, but uh, that's all I know about it, um, about that part of it. But uh, clearly that mechanism to communicate has been in place long before there was permitting software. So I'm, I'm uh, 
feeling very confident that things are going to continue to go well. I appreciate all the hard work of the um, building department and apologize for my barking dog. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Okay, seeing none, um, Mr. Cochran, will you please call the roll on the interlocal um, cooperation agreement between the City of Bloomington and, Bloomington and Monroe County regarding building code authority? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you so much. All right, next item, please. Move for approval of the agreements between Monroe County Board of Commissioners and Indiana Railroad. Fund okay. name, sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, fund name, Westside Economic Development Area, fund number 4920, in an amount not to exceed $25,000. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Ms. Ridge. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Um, so we have been working on this project for quite some time. Um, it's actually the Vernal Pike Connector Trail to Detmer Park going towards the going east from the Loesch Road connection. Um, so the Indiana Railroad falls within the project limits. Um, so Monroe County is required to have a license for the transverse crossing and then a temporary right of way permit for working within the railroad property when the, um, the trail is extended. Um, the permit to be on the railroad property is not to exceed 5,000 and the license agreement to place the transverse crossings is um, 20,000. Great, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins? No, I know that this has taken a long time to, <laughs> to get to this point. So congratulations and <laughs> thanks for your hard work on it. I think this is the most progress since 2016 on, on this little piece. So we're thrilled to keep it going. Wow. So. A big thanks to Margie for helping me push this along and Bernie Garitas for his assistance with the railroads. That's great. Uh, Commissioner Jones. I'm just pleased to see our trail system being extended. And yes, there has been a long wait for this. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Just raise your hand in the Zoom screen to let us know. Each commenter will be limited to three minutes of total time. Okay. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on agreements between Monroe County Board of Commissioners and Indiana Railroad? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffords. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. All right. Thank you. Next item, please. Move approval of awarding of 2022 material bids for Monroe County Highway Department fund names, motor vehicle highway and cumulative bridge and stormwater fund number 1176, 1135 and 1197. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Um, and Ms. Ridge, if you would um, give us the scoop on these uh, six, well, five items, well, six items. <laughs> sure. Uh, so we opened sealed bids on December 13th by representatives from the Monroe County Highway Department. Um, they were open and read publicly via Zoom at 11 a.m. So the recommendations for those for our material bids for 2022 uh, being um, mostly the lowest, most responsive, responsible bid. Um, item number one, gasoline, according to uh, Indiana code 5-22-17-10, we award it to all bidders uh, due to the escalator clause. Item two, aggregate stone, gravel, and sand. Uh, we are awarding it according to Indiana code 36-1-12-4. And that is basically separating your county out into quadrants, gives us the avail availability to award it to more than one contractor in that vicinity to help save on travel costs um, for the location of certain projects. So the Northwest quadrant um, of the county would be Ord uh, Rogers Group, Ord Road, Rogers Group in Morgan County and Lincoln Park. 
The northeast quadrant of the county would be Rogers Group on Ord Road. The southwest quadrant of the county would be Rogers Group on Ord Road or Seabolt Quarry. And the southeast quadrant of the county would be Blackwell Limestone Project pro Products and Rogers Group on Ord Road. Um, item three, longitudinal pavement markings paint. And item four, long longitudinal and transverse markings and thermoplastic. And item five, removal of these items is awarded to Indiana Traffic Services, LLC. Item number six uh, for epoxy, um, we had no bids for that. And then item number seven is corrugated metal pipe and high density polythylene pipe. Um, and we would award that to CivilCon Incorporated due to being the low, lowest, most responsive, most responsible bidder. Excellent. Thank you so much for going through that list. Uh, so uh, let's see if there are comments or questions. Uh, Commissioner Giffins? Yeah, polyethylene pipe. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, we're good. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? Is it any kind of problem that there were no bids for the longitudinal pavement markings epoxy? No, that is not an item that we retun 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 yeah, retunely use. And I'm not even sure that I'm saying that word right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, the items that um, ITS um, uh, bid on is the main items that we use within our department. Thank you. Excellent. Yep. And just uh, to note for the record that this will include bridge projects, stormwater projects, and mm -hmm. other highway projects. These uh, this accounts for all three subgroup departments of the highway department. So, absolutely. Um, each department orders their own pipes and uses it out of their own budgets. And actually, we went ahead and um, stormwater highway and Cumbridge bridge accounts went ahead and ordered multiple pipes in. Uh, December to try and stay with the 2021 prices. So we did uh, receive all those pipes and um, so hopefully uh, we're saving costs in the long run, uh, moving ahead to 2022. Right, smart shopping, excellent, uh, great. Uh, thank you so much. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Just raise your hand on the Zoom screen. I see none. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please um, call the roll on awarding of the 2022 material bids for Monroe County Highway Department as outlined by Ms. Ridge? Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Right. Thank you. Next item, please. Um, I have a question about this, um, I would like to move to continue this item. Should I make that motion or should I? Sure. Okay, all right. I'd, I'd like to move to continue um, item K, amendment to chapter 755, the use of and work within a county right of way. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Did you wanna name a date for uh, when this will come back? Well, I'd like to give us a couple of weeks um, to discuss it with all part, parties that are involved. So I was gonna suggest uh, possibly January 19th, if that yeah. works for other people. Does that work for you, Ms. Rich? Um, hopefully, um, uh, the person, uh, our project manager um, that oversees this portion of the department uh, handles the mailbox issues. He's been out um, on part-time um, medical leave. Um, he's doing some work from home, um, going through some testing. I'm so we're waiting for him to come back full time. Um, so we're working with him. So I hate to set a date, but as soon as I know something, I can get back with you and let you know as soon as we can bring it back. Um, we could also meet with him by Zoom. That's uh, I can talk to Lee um, and Paul. I'd like to involve uh, Lee Baker and Paul and Dave Schilling and Ben in on this conversation. Um, so actually, I could probably just go ahead and set up a Zoom meeting with all of them and um, hopefully get this back to you on the 19th. Okay. Well, we can set the 19th as a date. And if there's okay. an issue and you need to extend that, just, you know, drop us a, drop us a note, let us know, and we can, we can continue it again. Okay. It's good to have a date uh, certain uh, yeah. for the public's. Uh, yeah. So we don't forget to. So 
So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, any um, other comments or questions from either of my colleagues on this motion to continue item K until January 19th commissioner's meeting? All right, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on motion to continue? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Uh, the motion to continue is approved three to zero. Right. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve Raggle Inc. agreement for North Shore Bridge number 193, fund name, cumulative bridge, fund number 1135, in an amount of $342,578.85. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Ms. Ridge, tell us all about it. So this is uh, one of the bridges in our five-year replacement plan. Um, we awarded the project to Ragel, uh, who was the lowest, most responsive, responsible bidder on 10-13-2021. Um, so now we would like to enter into the contract to complete this project. The goal is to start the project around March 28th, and it is to be completed by June 1st. Uh, we chose that time um, due to a lot of late traffic in the area uh, at, at Lake Lemon. Um, we have been in constant contact with the township trustee, Michelle Bright, I believe. Um, and some of the residents out there getting the word out. Uh, the, the only closure part will be a max of 14 days during this time. Um, I was talking to our engineer yesterday, if we can uh, get it open a little bit sooner with uh, temporary for emergency services only, we will make those uh, accommodations, um, but there will be a couple days where it will be permanently closed for at least seven to 14 days. So, but we will, uh, we send this, this out uh, with our weekly notices for upcoming projects. Um, so we will keep the public informed. The school system are, is aware of the project and emergency services in the area. Great, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins? No, it's just amazing that you are able to plan so that you reduce the amount of almost discomfort to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge detour because um, you'd have to go over into Brown County. So we know it's a real um, an issue for emergency services and the residents. Um, so uh, it's our goal to do what we can to eliminate, to not reach that 14 day, but it is in the contract that it could, it's not to be closed longer than 14 days. Commissioner Jones. I was wondering, is this, I'm not familiar with this bridge, is it, an actual bridge or is it a culvert? I believe it's more than one culvert in a, that area that will be replaced with a bridge. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's see if there's any uh, public comment uh, on this item. Okay, seeing none, Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on the uh, motion to approve the agreement with Regal Inc. for the North Shore Bridge number 193. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Great, thank you so much. Next item, please. Move to approve uh, Yasmin L. Stump Law Group PC agreement for Vernal Pike Connector Road, fund name Vernal Pike Connector Road, fund number, 8165 in an amount as needed. We have a motion, can we get a second? Okay, good deal, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Ridge, tell us about this. Uh, this agreement is, uh, we, are, we, have, we are within the right of way acquisition process for the Vernal Pike Connector Road. Um, I believe we have seven property owners up there. Um, so we uh, retain um, attorney assistance in case of condemnation. Uh, so this is the only reason that it would be used is if we cannot find, if negotiations cannot be settled between Monroe County and the property owner. Um, so we just retain the attorney um, of choice. Um, Yasmin's uh, Stump Law Group, we've worked with them on our sample road project. Um, they have done a tremendous job on that one. Um, so that this is just to retain them in case they are needed. Great, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? No, we 
just hope that everything can go smoothly. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. All right, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Seeing none, we'll come back to the board. Mr. Copper, will you please call the roll on the agreement with Yasmin El Stump Law Group uh, for the Vernal Pike Connector Road? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, um, next we have appointments. Folks, bear with us, this is that time of year. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> I move that we appoint uh, Commissioner Lee Jones to the Criminal Justice Response Committee, the Environmental Commission, um, and to continue her appointments with the Emergency Management Advisory Council and the Community Corrections Advisory Board. And do you wanna, do you wanna go through the rest? Okay, I move that we appoint Julie Thomas to the Criminal Justice Response Committee, to the Plan Commission and to the NPO. Do, we'll I, do you want me to do all the other boards and commissions? At the same no, time? we'll go ahead and do that as the next as the next motion. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Second. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sorry. Um, and um, I'll note that um, Commissioner Giffins is going to continue to work with the Housing Security Group, and you will be serving as a proxy to the Criminal Justice Response Committee. So appreciate uh, everybody's hard work year over year. Um, this is really important work. Um, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on these appointments? Uh, Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Uh, motion passes three to zero. Great. And now we have another batch of um, appointments to boards and commissions, if you would please. Commissioner Giffins. I do have one question. Do I also include the length of the term with this or not? Yes, you should include okay. the length of the term and the expiration um, as noted. And um, um, yes, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, I'll, shall I go through all of them also? Please do. Let's do okay. this all in one <laughs> batch. I'll swoop. Okay, I move to appoint William E. Smith III, Mary Morgan, and Janet Peru along with Dominic Thompson to the Affordable Housing Commission. This is our two-year terms, which will expire December 31st in 2023. Move to appoint M. Davis Legron to the Alcohol Beverage Board. This is a one-year term, which expires December 31st, 2022. Move to appoint Angie Purdy to the ADA slash Americans with Disabilities Committee. This is a three-year term, expiring December 31st, 2024. Appoint Catherine Watson and Matt Taller to the Animal Management Board. These are three year terms, which expired December 31st, 2024. Appoint Ken Ritchie to the Aviation Board to the Airport, four year term, which expires December 31st, 2025. Appoint Dr. Carol Tolukian and George Hegeman to the Board of Health. These are four year terms, which expired December 31st, 2025. Point Vicki Sorensen to the Board of Zoning Appeals for your term, which expires January 1st, 2026. Appoint Angie Purdy to the Child Protection Team, a one year term expiring January 1st, 2023. Appoint Mike Campbell to the Convention and Visitors Commission, one year term expiring December 31st, 2021. Appoint Robert. Audio and Lisa Ridge to the Drainage Board, four year terms, which expired December 31st, 2025. Point Duncan Campbell, Deborah Reed, and Donald Maxwell to the Historic Preservation Board, three year terms expiring January 1st, 2022. Point Susan Gray, Byron Banger, Eric Sater, and Goldberg Maynard Jr. to the Human Rights Commission, two year terms, which expired December 31st, 2023. Appoint Angie Purdy and Jeff Cockrell to the Inter 
Controls Oversight Committee, one year term, which expires January 1st, 2023. Appoint Bill Rigger to the Licensing Board, four year term, which expires January 1st, 2026. Appoint Evelyn Carroll and Brian O'Neill to the Parks Access to Recreation Endowment Advisory Committee, four year term, which expires January 1st, 2026. Appoint Ed Brown, Mike Adams, and Kevin Roebling to the Monroe Fire Protection District four-year terms, which expired December 31st, 2025. Appoint Margaret Clements to the Plan Commission and simultaneously to the Board of Zoning Appeals, a four-year term, which expires January 1st, 2026. Appoint Jim Shelton and Richard Martin to the Redevelopment Commission, one-year appointment expiring January 1st, 2023. Appoint Chad Leitmeyer to the South Central Regional Sewer District, a four-year appointment and I'm not quite sure when that expires. I don't know if it's December 31st or January 1st, sorry, um, of 2026, that would be. Appoint Jean Kapler, Steve Malone, Beverly Callender Anderson, Carol Weiss Kennedy, and Sarah Lawson to the Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission to your terms expiring January 1st, 2024. Appoint Amanda Turpenseed to the Traffic Commission to the term which expires December 31st, 2023. And appoint Jessica McClellan to the Women's Commission as the commissioner's designee through January 1st, 2022. Second. And there was a typo on the list I read. It should be Sarah yes. Lawson, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's just our that's just our internal list, so that's yeah, my yeah. error. And I will note, uh, for the record, I made another error uh, for the Historic Preservation Board. No, I made I made this error uh, for the Historic Preservation Board. The three-year term expires January first, twenty twenty-five. That is my error as well. But remarkable job, <laughs> and a huge thank you to everyone who um, has served and will continue is offered to continue to serve. Um, on our boards and commissions. Um, there are um, additional, um, there are always additional um, 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 elements and, and um, um, additional uh, work that needs to be done. Um, and I, I think I also left another one off. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and vote on this, but I left, um, we need somebody, a second also. We did get a second. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, somehow I've left something off this list. So give me one second here. Um, why don't we go ahead and have um, Mr. Cockrell, if you would call the roll on this item and I will work furiously here to get this addressed. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Excellent. Um, give me one second, if you all would, please. I don't know how that happened. Um, we have one more board to make appointments for. Um, my computer is not cooperating. Is it the Women's Commission? Nope, it is okay. the uh, Fire District. That's, that, that was read as there were three or oh, it is. It is on there. Okay, yeah. got yes. it. Yep, I was looking in the wrong place. Thank you. I thought I'd missed a name, but yes, we do have them all. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Um, so again, thank you to everyone who has served um, and is willing to serve. And um, I um, uh, would like to note as well as part of um, our announcements that we do um, have other vacancies um, in other boards and commissions and we could use your help. Uh, Monroe County residents um, supply your uh, wisdom, time and expertise uh, we have openings on Affordable Housing, Redevelopment Commission, Economic Development Commission, South Central Regional Sewer District, Animal Management. The list goes on. So as many people as we have uh, pointed today with gratitude for their future service, 
we could use your help. So if you're interested in applying, go to co.monroe.in.us and check through um, on the uh, boards and commissions uh, information page. You can see minutes from past meetings. You can see um, the information about um, when they meet and their purpose and goals and find something that's a good fit for you and apply as soon as you can. We appreciate that. Um, also, I um, want to note again that um, remonstration process for uh, against annexation by the city of Bloomington continues through Thursday, um, 5 p.m. And at that time as well, we will be hosting a uh, press conference at the courthouse uh, to sort of um, mark the closure of that remonstrance process. But if you have any questions, please contact the auditor as soon as you can. Um, we have um, a uh, reminder as well that there is a township assistance fund, which will continue at least through um, January, if not longer, but um, that township assistance fund um, is designed to help residents directly, uh, those who especially have been suffering financial losses as a result of COVID. Um, if you are um, having difficulty meeting your base, the, the, your budget for basic necessities, please contact your township trustee. Your township trustee uh, can be found by going to, uh, by calling 211 or going to in211.org. Um, it also appears, that list of contact information also appears uh, in our minutes each week. Um, and we do want to um, remind everyone that no matter where you live in Monroe County, you do have a township trustee and they are there to help you out. Um, and also uh, we do want to um, remind everyone about the testing and vaccine clinic. Uh, January 5th today through the 8th, noon to 8 p.m. at 800 North Indiana. Please make an appointment online through the Indiana Health Department, and you can find more information on this at our, our um, health, our Board of Health, uh, Health Department page uh, through co.monroe.in.us. Uh, thanks again to TSD for another great year of great service. We appreciate your hard work, uh, especially Ms. Dayton. And um, anything else for the good of the order? I have one thing. I wanted to um, acknowledge that Scott Souter, who runs our weight and measures um, department all by himself, um, he, I want to applaud his selection by um, the state director of weights and measures to assist in updating the 97 year old Indiana Weights and Measures Code. <laughs> Um, I was quite astounded to read that the code was that old, but um, I want to applaud him, and I'm sure that part of the reason he was chosen was because of his experience and expertise. So thank you for your Who hard knows? work. And, yeah. Who knows, Mr. Sauter's great. Excellent. Excellent news. Excellent. All right. Um, and with that, um, we will be adjourned. Should we meet at noon for our work session? Would that work for everybody? Sure. Okay, great. So we will go ahead and hold our work session at noon right here on the same Zoom channel. Um, and in the interim, uh, we are adjourned from our regular meeting. Thanks everyone, get vaccinated. <laughs>